Then I received that Reckless was going to E2. And when I read that, I was like, holy shit, it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, holy shit, it might not happen. And if I'm publish this and it's not happening, um, you know, I'm, I'm like throwing all, all the offseason. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Tom reporting from the off season and today we have a special guest as an interviewee because you may have seen him on Twitter actually, um, covering the roster changes in the LEC and a bit in the LCS as well. It's Pablo Suarez, but you know him as Bloop, who is a journalist working uh, predominantly for Esports Maniacos at the moment. How are you doing Bloop? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. As I said before, a little bit tired, but very, very happy with, with my job this offseason, to be honest. Yeah, you, you've been uh, very busy, so I imagine uh, the exhaustion is kicking in at the moment. <laughs> um, right now, I'm, I'm like relaxed. I'm very mm. relaxed. Um, when yesterday the, the reckless thing gone, gone right, <laughs> uh that that made me so so relaxed because i was uh like with a bit of anxiety about it and mm. if this finally um does uh, doesn't get right the people is going to you know come at me very angry <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh yeah uh, now we're just chilling to be honest yeah yeah we'll, we'll get we'll build towards you uh breaking the yeah. stories but um as i told you when i approached you for this interview um even though i know you you know we've been talking for quite some time now and just yeah. chatting about the lec i think for many people you're a new face in the industry and people who have not just followed your work for a long time and mm -hmm. i i thought we'd give them a, a good chance to get to know you and your work and how long you've been doing this so let's start just at the beginning since how long have you been covering league of legends of course um i've been like watching uh league of legends in i think 20 2018 when when the finals between uh Schalke and, and Fnatic in in madrid mm -hmm. uh but then i started uh interested me about you know competitive uh, uh part of, of league of legends and i started reaching like uh small outlets here in spain and in August of uh, last year, I started working for um, a little media talk. Um, it's uh, full esports. Yeah, full esports. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been there for like four months. And then I started talking with, with Juste, who um, some people might know. He's like the boss on, on Sport Maniacos. And after some talks, uh, he was interested. Uh, me to cover some things in the in the website and from there from their from their website i started going to into the the daily talk show that we make on on twitch mm -hmm. and yeah uh, we are we are now i joined the sport mania course exactly uh one year ago and now uh we are here covering covering the off season with a quite good um correct ratio so so yeah it's been uh it's been an intense but uh, a short ride to be honest yeah it's uh it's been quite a rise for you uh in you know in this scene but you started covering mainly by um uh, writing about the superliga orange right the spanish league yeah i started like making uh generic uh, news like uh, new patch uh, or, mm. or new items whatever but then I started doing like my own pieces about you know uh, um, important match on the on the Superliga, uh, making like a chronic about it, mm -hmm. um, and you know making my own content um, because I I I felt like I needed to to be creative in my in my pieces, so that's why I started making this different content um more more personal yeah and when, when did you start following and writing about the lec more then uh following the the lec like half a year or half or a split before uh, it was renamed to to lec when when it was like the last part of the lcu 
mm -hmm. I started there, I think. Right, so you've been around ever since the beginning of what we now know as the LEC, like the franchised uh, model. Yeah, I mean, when the when all the rumors about the the franchises and what teams will be or won't be there, mm -hmm. um, there I remember that I was like uh, fully into the into the competitive League of Legends. So mm -hmm. so yeah. And um, as we said right now, um, you've been covering roster moves and um, all the changes and leaks and stuff like this. But uh, is that something that has always interested you to cover because? It's something that right now we know you for because you've broken big stories and big roster moves. Um, but has it been always been an interest of you or is it something that you've picked up lately? Um, yes, I, I've always been interested on, on that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I remember um, reading uh, the Jake of Wolf report about uh, G2 getting getting caps and moving perks into the, into the bot lane. And I said like, Holy shit! How this guy knows? <laughs> <laughs> how this guy knows? And and how can I uh, break this 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 news and and telling these these stories before before anyone else? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I started exploring that firstly on on Spanish league on Superliga, mm, and you know I I entered Spormaniacos like one year ago and it was right on the off season. So right when I enter, when I enter this outlet, I've been interested on interested on on that because um, Juste and 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 the rest of my of my colleagues were breaking some some roster moves. So uh, since that, I I've been working to get you know like a a big um, contact uh, mm -hmm. list and reliable, of course, mm -hmm. uh, contacts. So so yeah, now we are here and and looks like I I I succeed on on that. Yeah, and uh, that's it's interesting, right? That something like that um, does it start slowly and then all of a sudden like skyrocket um, like uh, exponentially in in what you get to hear because you know maybe people see oh this is somebody who's interested in covering this I can also use him uh, to leak my information too or is it something that steadily grows all th all the way throughout? Hmm. Um, to be honest, and in my own case, uh, I usually like you, you end talking with a lot of people and then, for example, a, a player or, or whatever tell you, uh, I've been hearing this from this team mm -hmm. and then I take that info and say, okay, I'm going to, to check this and to make uh, sure that this is true. Uh, after doing this, I reach the teams, uh, usually. Uh, you know, if, uh, I ask, um, do you want to comment uh, anything about it? And most important, uh, could this report um, harm the the move? Mm -hmm. Because I, th I think that's like the most uh, important part of of this kind of 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 job. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think that in my own case, I I heard things like talking with a with 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 a friend you know with right. a with a friend like as as we could be in a in a bar uh taking a beer um and he told me oh okay i i heard uh, this uh, i think this is a, a troll move from from these guys and then you know i uh, my job is to is to make sure that that info is 100 uh, percent accurate mm -hmm. now now for some people you know there are people who, um like they can be fans of teams or sometimes team members themselves um, or people who don't quite understand why it's necessary for you to report on matters like these. So, you know, uh, as a journalist, I do understand myself and I have my own view on it. But from your perspective, um, why is it important to report on these matters and why does it interest you so much to report on them? Uh, this is a hard question. I think that there has been a little controversy around it because some people think that okay imagine that if we didn't know nothing about the g2 reckless move for mm -hmm. example uh do you think that that would be more interesting or less my point of view here is um when you have rumors um you you are interested on on that move like one month early so because you are you are uh, hearing the the first rumors you know uh, one day you heard uh, reckless might leave Fnatic. Mm 
and then you heard uh, perks might leave G2. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, perks is going to Fnatic potentially. Mm -hmm. But, you know, next week, it's Reckless who is going to G2. So I think that that makes um, uh, people um, stick to the, to, to the content, uh, stick to the social media, checking what is going on, checking Reddit, checking everything at, uh, at the minute. So in my opinion, which uh, maybe it's it's a bit biased because I you know it's it's part of my job, mm -hmm. but but I think I think it's better to have this this content and this content is necessary. Um, but I think it's necessary uh, when people that 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 making it is is responsible with with what they say. Yeah, uh, it's a thing that that um, Jacob um, told to to Ashley Kang in a recent interview. Um, the most important part of this job is to be to be responsible about about what you say and of course how do you say it. right yeah no I, I think you said something along the lines of right um, I would rather be um, right but be the second person to report it than be wrong in the first person to report it because um, we've seen in the past that it can influence like false reporting can actually influence a player's chances um, now, you mentioned Jacob Wolf, and he is somebody you've mentioned as well on Twitter. Um, and he is somebody uh, who has mentioned you a few times as well as um, not necessarily like a protocol son, because you're both uh, still pretty young. I think you're both younger than I am, actually. Um, and, but he, he has helped you a lot, hasn't he, in developing and uh, growing the skill and being a reporter. Can you, can you shed more light on this? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about about him. To be honest, um, a small, as I as I uh, wrote on Twitter a few days ago, a small part of the audience see this like a competition, mm -hmm. and I see more like a cooperation job. I mean, not necessarily um, sharing our own information, but. For example, I, I can uh, send him a, a DM and I told to him, okay, I've been hearing this. Did you hear the same? Or do you think this is safe to report? And he, he tells me, uh, I think this is a bit uh, premature or I think this is uh, this is safe to to publish. Mm -hmm. And since day one of this season, when I f uh, first heard about some roster rumors, uh, I've been talked to him and he always had like uh, tips for me and um you know uh, he's been helping a lot and for me it's uh for me him he, uh, he's like um a huge inspiration and of course um uh one of the main things uh because of of what i started uh, making this this content so mm -hmm. i'm glad that he he likes uh, my job and 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 of course that he that he helped uh, so much yeah he he has helped you like uh giving you tips in how to approach uh sources and how to handle information as well it's a, in in that sense been a mentor yeah yeah i i mean yeah we can we can say that um about yeah approaching to sources also um wording uh on the you know when you make that the the tweet with the with mm -hmm. the roar or the article or or whatever um um he he told me how important is uh the words that you use because you can pick a word that um, it's similar like like uh another one but doesn't mean the same and could change the the um, the information that the people receive and the people understand so yeah that that kind of small things that i think you'll learn with with um with experience uh, making this content as he is a person who have a lot of experience on on this on this field uh he helped me he helped me a lot about it yeah now um we touched on it in the beginning but uh we are gonna talk more about it because your biggest report this year so far which immediately gave you I think like six thousand followers on Twitter. I'm I'm not sure. It was it was an uh, it was a huge um, bomb to drop. I guess. How do we call it, by the way? Because we have the wolf bomb. What is it? Is it the bloop scoop? Is that what's uh, what we're calling it? Yeah, when, when you... I, I think I think that's the that's the name that that people uh, put it into into it. Uh, it's a, it's a good scoop. term. Yeah, the bloop scoop. 
Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll we'll call it the bloop scoop. So your biggest okay. uh, your biggest scoop was obviously the the reckless move with going to G two. When did you first yeah. catch wind of this move, and uh, did you immediately like your heart rate went up by by a hundred beats per minute? What, what walk me yeah, through yeah, yeah. this? Um, I first heard about this. The same day as as Fnatic um, uh, published the 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 tweet that Reckless was leaving, uh, I, I I had to to look exactly about the the hours because it all went in a in a few in a few hours. Yes. But um, before that tweet, I received two reports about okay, Fnatic has started talking with other ID carries, mm -hmm. and then I received that Reckless was going to E2. And when I read that, I was like, holy shit, it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, holy shit, it might not happen, and if I am publish this and it's not happening, um, you know, I'm, I'm like throwing all, all the offseason. So, um, yeah, I started talking with both uh, people on G2, people on Fnatic, people on the on the middle of, of both. Um, and yeah, um, then Fnatic uh, released that tweet and I received uh, a, a confirmation that, yeah, it's a done deal. And then I was like, okay, I have to open uh, Twitter really fast <laughs> and, and tweet this. And in fact, uh, most people um, won't know about this, but I, I tweeted that G2 Esports was um, showing interest, high interest on on Reckless, mm -hmm. and that Reckless um, told um, the the Fnatic uh, management that he wanted to to go to to Fnatic. But a few minutes later, I had to delete this tweet. Because the the information was like uh, super fast, um, and I had to delete that. And a few minutes later, uh, <laughs> it's funny because uh, people was like, hey, "Why did you delete? It's not happening. What <laughs> is going on?" And and uh, a few a few minutes later, I I tweeted that that thing that you could see right now. Uh, it's the, on the my it's on my profile. Yeah, and and I tweeted, "It's a done deal, guys." Yeah. It's like no dubs here. I'm mm -hmm. full convinced about it. Mm -hmm. It would it it would be cool to to report this before Fnatic announced that that he left uh, the team. But I'm happy that that I you know I I I, I was responsible about about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it is. Um, obviously, in that moment, it's incredibly tense, and you're like the adrenaline is rushing through you as you are gathering the information, as you, and as you are writing up um, the, st the story like this. But once you've posted it, did did you then calm down, or were you still like a bit shaking with excitement um, for? Yeah, what I was. I, I I was shaking to be honest. Uh, watching like the Reddit threads, the the comments, and and everything. But I have to say that. This was not the report that made me uh, the more nervous about. Mm. Uh, in fact, it was about Niski because oh. uh, I first reported on on Niski uh, on an international level, but I I was preparing an article. I end the article. I tweeted the the news on Twitter, and literally five minutes later, uh, Lekip post about about uh, about Niski. Ah. So I I was the first by only five minutes. So that that was the the report that made me the the nervous about about it. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Well in, in that sense it's still a race, but um obviously yeah. you all work towards one goal and um I'm I'm glad I'm just uh, it's just nice to hear like from your perspective what it was like to report on this. It sounds very hectic. Um do you think that we've had most of the the big scoops now, or is there still something that you're anticipating? What what are you looking for most to in the remaining of the um, season? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, no clue about about uh, LCK and LPL, but in the Western leagues, we have the um, the Fnatic ADC left the, um, because they didn't uh, make a decision yet. 
and we also have the potential TSM drama. Mm-hmm. As as every fucking off season, you know, it's like <laughs> every every off season TSM has uh, any kind of drama, but this time it's about uh, uh, Swara might not happen, and if Swara uh, not it's not happening, Double Leaf could could leave the the starting five, mm-hmm. uh, and they had to to start with Lost, who was uh, about to be transferred to to EG. So it's a like a domino there yeah. so um that's i think the the biggest uh topic left on the offseason but lec is mostly locked i think nine out of ten rosters are are locked mm-hmm. so so yeah uh here in the lec we can start you know uh discussing about roster making that uh making the tier list. yes yeah of course <laughs> But but in a um, might be a a little drama with around around TSM as uh, as per usual. All right, Blue, we're gonna keep our eyes open on your Twitter and uh, well also on Jacob Bull's Twitter. Who knows uh, who breaks this story? But we're absolutely gonna follow it. Thank you so much for joining me, man. Um, and yeah, for telling us a bit more about yourself and uh, about the work you do. I'm looking forward uh, to next year in the LEC and. Uh, well, I guess the next big roster moves will happen uh, between the spring and summer splits. If we're even going to have two splits, because who knows what's going to happen there. Yeah, who so, knows? Yeah, who knows? All right, thank you very much, man. Thanks for inviting me, of course. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, to talk with you, Tom.